just days after our panel about OnlyFans deciding it's going to ban sexually explicit content starting October 1st, now they're banning their ban. They have reversed their decision. So, guys, could you first let's start with, with Dylan and Norbert? Could you guys just again give you a brief uh, synopsis of who you are, what you do with OnlyFans? And then we'll get into how you guys found out about the change of decision. And I should just give a quick plug to our prior video. Go check it out if you want to see what they were thinking, what we were talking about when the band first came out. But please, guys, go ahead. Take it away. How, how are you? My name is Dylan. Dylan Roman. I do OnlyFans, a.k.a. porn. Um, I've been doing it <laughs> since April. And yeah, that's it. That's about it. Norb. Hi, my name is Norbert, and I go by Kino Red on Twitter. You can find me there. I've been in the business for six, seven years almost. Uh, started working for, with studios, behind the scenes, camera editing, and production. Also have some like directing credits in my, to my name. And um, for the past couple of years, I've been working with models and shooting their and shooting their content and editing their content for for OnlyFans and uh, some of the other platforms as well. So that's my background. And I'm Bill Doris, former news journalist. And unfortunately, I don't do porn or OnlyFans. Sorry, guys. <laughs> yeah, we we shot uh, and worked on controversial content with mainstream media. Um, so, OK, let's uh, go to how you guys found out about this, because it looks like they just sent out a tweet here. Thank you to everyone for making your voices heard. We have secured assurances necessary to support our diverse creator community and have suspended the planned October 1st policy change. OnlyFans stands for inclusion, and we will continue to provide a home for all creators. OnlyFans started originally as a alternative to Patreon, believe it or not, where content creators could put their stuff out there and immediately start making money back on the content that they've created. Now, I don't think it was shortly thereafter. I want to say it was a little bit longer than a lot of people realize when adult themed content was starting to make its rounds on OnlyFans. And then a few people realized, oh my gosh, I can make so much money as uh, doing this as opposed to doing just about anything else. And I also think a lot of people, this was about the same time that Twitch was dropping the hammer on uh, some more adult themed or even controversial um, uh, streams. So those folks left Twitch to go to OnlyFans. I don't think it's 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 too well known, but based on the comments from some of the the sex workers that I follow on Twitter, they were posting over the weekend, uh, obviously uh, their disappointment in um, in the announced changes last week, and some of them came out and said in public that the reason they went to the platform because they were actually approached by the platform initially. So the platform was telling them, "Oh, listen, you can do this on our platform, so come and join us," and. I know every business tried to keep a squeaky clean image, but let's be honest about it. When we say OnlyFans, we don't think of cooking videos. We don't think of, uh, you know, oh, workout videos with my trainer. Uh, no, the only thing that comes to mind is sex and, and adult work and porn on the platform. Whether it's videos, whether it's streams, whether it's public or private. That's 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 what we associate with um, the platform with. So um, yeah, so that's OnlyFans, I think, in a nutshell. So Dylan, when we were originally talking about it banning sexually explicit content, there was blame cast on the credit card companies, saying that like say Mastercard had changed its terms of service, and that there would be heightened requirements to make sure there was no, say, like illegal activity, uh, child pornography, making its way through the site. Um, but then you guys had some questions about, was that really what was going on? And so could we talk a little bit about that? Uh, what, what did you guys think originally was behind the decision to ban that content? Well, it was really confusing because how were they going to make money off of that? I think maybe they expected a more mainstream audience to come in and fill fill the space but yeah it was very they didn't really tell us anything either it was like a, a short email with the new terms and you basically couldn't do anything other than show news yes like still photos basically yeah mm -hmm. 
Yeah. And so, yeah, Norbert, you had some thoughts on, on what was behind it too. Cause you had brought up like Facebook, Instagram, yeah. you know, this bigger, you know, kids in the playground that are somehow, you know, full flying under the radar while only fans, you know, was making this decision. And it, it, I think that's why it applies to the work I do on my channel, because I'm always asking the question about censorship and decentralization. For instance, was this a move to go after like the little guy um, and not really for the moral values that they say they were espousing? Oh, let's be honest about it. When it comes to businesses, especially the likes of MasterCard or banks, you know, let's be honest about it. They're totally okay with, with questionable uh, behavior of their clients. You know, um, remember I brought up Nestle, you know, they went to the U.S. Supreme Court just so they can get away with the fact that people were suing them uh, as victims of child slave labor, uh, you know, and they won the case because they had the money. But I guess MasterCard and the banks are totally OK with Nestle and similar businesses, you know, conducting business, even though some of it is questionable. Yes, I did bring up Facebook. I also bought up uh, Pornhub and the New York Times article um, that basically shed light to some of the, the issues on Pornhub. And then the response from Pornhub that, yeah, maybe we had around 50. I, I, I'll be honest with you, I, I don't know the exact number, but, you know, they had a couple of under 100 videos that were, you know, of child porn or revenge porn. And they, re you know, I, I also pointed out that some of the issues were, you know, if somebody reports, let's say it's a revenge porn video, please don't make the victims go through courts to get the videos removed. But when it comes to the numbers on Facebook, these videos are in the tens of thousands, you know, and these videos are the ones that get removed and maybe go through the cracks. So I, I brought it up, you know, so I, we don't even probably know the numbers, the actual numbers that would be on the site without, you know, supervision or without, you know, some third parties, um, you know, having people looking at gory stuff or, or you know, terrible stuff online that they make sure that we actual average users don't don't see you know that illegal aspect of the industry is a concern that i hear from a lot of people and you know when we did our last panel we we're like well you know how could you have this without ensuring that children aren't harmed or that there is an illegal activity you can't and so then would default to then get rid of it altogether what's your response to that well, just to clarify, um, um, you know, you say the industry, let's put it this, let, let's make it clear. I don't think anyone in the industry makes content that, you know, child pornography or, you know, legally they cannot, obviously. So I wouldn't call them the industry. I, w I would call them, I don't I even know what. Uh, laws exactly because anyone in the industry if they are working legally they have their, their their company set up they have the paperwork set up you know legally you have to hold on to that stuff forever you know especially for like relicensing your content for example if you want something on dvd the the, the 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 you know the the barriers or the you know the um the loops you have to get get over the sorry the hoops you have to get over to to actually release something you know, have to have paperwork for everything ids you know all that stuff. So the legal part is already working on that. It's it's the 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 part where you know amateurs film that stuff and they post it post it online. You know they are the ones ruining it. It's not the the, the actual business. And there's one more thing I wanna wanna bring up here because a couple of years ago, um, I think Rashida Jones had a show on Netflix, Hot Girls mm -hmm. Wanted. Yeah, where you know it was all about you know these girls being exploited by. A pornographer in Florida. Now that pornographer was a 23 year old kid in his basement, you know, and the people I have ever worked with in the industry, none of them are like that, you know, mm -hmm. and it's it's infuriating, you know, when some random person nowadays, everyone can get a camera and a couple of lights, you know, anyone, anyone can get a camera and a couple of lights, even just use your iPhones or phones and call yourself a pornographer, call yourself a, a content creator. That doesn't necessarily make them like that. And it's terrible that, you know, there are still girls, you know, in, in situations where they think this will work out for me. You know, I can pay for my nursing school. I can I can, I can get extra money to support my family. But, you know, when, when you get examples like this amplified in the media, it's it's not the truth. You know, it, it is simply not what the industry is you know um you can by the way i recommend you know you, you maybe get in touch with with people from the free uh, from the free speech coalition as well you know they are experts you know they're they're fighting you know they're lobbying for example to make sure that um 
this uh, what Mastercard did um, doesn't happen, you know, because it's not just the issue of OnlyFans. It's a much bigger issue if banks and financial institutions can basically dictate what goes online and what doesn't. That's that's a major, major issue there. And, you know, sorry, just one last thing. I was, for example, you know, I brought up Colgate at the beginning, but there were examples. Um, there's this Twitter account I sent you, um, Gustavo Turner. And, for example, he was posting, I think, um, examples of, you know, Nazi memorabilia being for sale and guess what you can use paypal and mastercard to pay for it you know or you know t-shirt with hitler on it you know so that's all okay for these companies but once again god forbid sex workers consensual you know people in videos where everything is consensual they are the bad actors for for these businesses you know there, there's so many other things that they could really go after if they wanted to but no it's it's an easy target you know this 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 war on sex and porn and sex workers, this has been on for decades. I think the biggest controversy ever since the year 2000 was, and correct me if I'm wrong, I think California, they were trying to pass a law or they did pass a law where comments have to be used. Prop 60. Right. Okay. And then a lot of porn makers and a lot of people in the industry went to Florida where you don't have to have uh, condoms used. And, and, but for the longest time, that was like the biggest controversy in the last 20 years or the biggest uh, news story. But it just seems to me, and I find it really funny how all of a sudden it's a problem again, because Joe Schmo and his wife down the street, you know, they can make hundred thousand dollars a year and they don't have to go sling burgers at mickey d's or deal with screaming kids at walmart well shit there's a labor shortage we gotta get these people back in so you know i just i think it's really funny how all of a sudden now that the average joe can make money doing porn and doing it in the safety of their own home now it's become a problem again. I like to point out the fact that, you know, even during the weekend, you know, I was following, you know, the, the news about this because it affects all of us, you know, like it's not my only revenue source, but obviously, you know, it's, it's a good chunk of it. So obviously I want to make sure, you know, that, that I still have access to it. But the comments were insane. They were so misogynistic. They were so anti-trans, homophobic. They were insane in a sense that everybody's saying, now you can go and work for McDonald's. It's not a job. It's not a real job. Now, I would like to tell people a couple of things. So try running your own business because that's what you're essentially doing. You know, it's like you, for example, you have a non-adult related, you know, podcast and you, we film these, you know, interviews. It's just the same work. You know, you have to schedule the shoots. You have to make sure you, you, you release on a regular basis, you know, because you will see even smaller accounts of sex workers who didn't make it. And let's be honest about it, they're either bitter or jealous. But, you know, posting randomly videos when you pull your fits out, doesn't. it's not going to make you money. What makes you money is consistency, diligence, and hard work. It is hard work on and off camera. People think, And creativity. Exactly. People think Some of us are publicly traded. Yeah. You can buy us in securities. <laughs> <laughs> Big picture, it's just there's there's risk uh, and danger with basically anything. I mean, at least a lot of stuff, and it's that's often what is used as the reason to disallow something, right? So we don't want misinformation about COVID. They'll say because it could cause people to die, um, and so then that's that's the rallying cry to kick people off of youtube including doctors as, as the mm -hmm. uh ceo of odyssey said it's like the bar is higher to to talk about things if you're a doctor on youtube than it is to practice medicine itself um <laughs> and you know and so then you just have to ask like okay having had a constitutional attorney on my channel a long time ago um daniel sheehan we talked about this before you know only fans was you know even a thing and he said pornography is often the place where, you know, the censorship topic or like the free speech advocates start to break down because it's like, oh, God, because nobody wants the stuff we just read. Right. Like in those articles, nobody wants that, that stuff. Um, of but so like his argument is, you know, then we need to do better at tackling that um, because you know, when you use those darker places in order to launch a campaign for um you know censorship of of uh 
you know, based on whatever the, you know, the reasoning is morality or again, like illegal activity or, or concern over death or, or whatever whatever you know it's it is often those places that that people go ah, i don't really want to talk about that i'll ignore that one that's where the door starts to open and encroach closer to stuff that maybe people would say well wait a second why not that you know we're like well okay but what about you know how far are you willing to take it and i think that's that's why i'm interested in this conversation is just to say like where is the line you know you know should there be one at all and um and what what kind of precedent do you set if you ignore um, if you ignore credit card companies, you know, or the financial institutions having control in this in this place, wh what are you teeing them up for in the future? I just think it's a fair question to ask. It is. And, you know, it's also a, a very dangerous um, place to, to, you know, uh, go into, because if you look at the UK, for example, my sister lives in the UK and, you know, the Internet provider, for example, automatically when um, you get your Internet provider set up, you know, there's this family block on the, on the network and you have to call them up to get it disabled. And I'm like, why would I want my internet, uh, you know, provider to, to monitor what I do? You know, like if I want to watch porn, then hello, uh, why do you have this, you know, family protection enabled? It should be an opt in. It shouldn't be an opt out. But uh, let's just get back to, to some of the points you said. Of course, illegal content should be illegal. Mm -hmm. You know, so if it's illegal legally, yeah, it has no place on any platform. And, and I think it's simple as that, you know, uh, child pornography, bestiality, all the other terrible things are illegal for a reason, for an extremely good reason. They have mm -hmm. no place to be online at all. So mm -hmm. them using these examples to, to say that, oh, this is the industry. No, it's not the industry. We're not producing this. This is random, as you said, outlaws, you know, creating this mm -hmm. content. Mm -hmm. And it's not us. Any other final thoughts from anybody before we wrap? I'll just mirror what I said earlier on my social media. If we worried more about child trafficking and things like that, as much as we do as to who's gotten the jab or not, we'd be mm -hmm. a lot better off. Exactly. Exactly. Especially if, let's say, the police took reports uh, more seriously than, mm -hmm. than they do. Yesterday on Twitter, there was a case where somebody posted a video of a young girl saying that their parents who adopted her are sexually abusing her. And then all the, the responses from the police department that they left California, they're in, in Arizona now, and this and that. You know, if somebody calls you that a child is reporting that they're being abused sexually or, 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 or physically, then you don't take time. You go and you call Child Protection Services and you take the child and don't let the child be with that family until the investigation is concluded. In this case, they told people they actually threatened the person posting the first post online um, to, to take the post down. You know, so as you said, Bill, yeah, if they actually focused on what's important, you know, maybe things could be better for the victims. If this conversation makes you want to drink, go check out my wine, allisonwinepromo.com, allison with one L, winepromo.com, 50% off of my favorite Malbecs and 50% off shipping. I should add that so you can see allisonwinepromo.com. But if you would rather have coffee because, I don't know, maybe you're, this just bores you because you're an adrenaline junkie. I'm not sure what you're thinking right now and you really need a uh, picker up or you should go to twininginecoffee.com slash allison and get yourself some <laughs> rock and high altitude wow. shade grown USD organic certified coffee. All right, guys. See you later. Thanks again. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>